Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, have you got your uh, vaccine jab? Yeah, uh, no, I ha- I had on shot already. I'm I'm waiting for for uh, the second. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 was the jab that you got? Uh, AstraZeneca. Yeah. Oh, AstraZeneca. Good. Yeah. 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 Uh, <coughs> and you, you, you are based in uh, India, or no, no, I'm, I'm in Singapore. I, I see Singapore. Okay, sorry, yeah, yeah, no, in Singapore, it's straight time. Yeah. yeah. When were you here last, uh, Mr. Pham? What? When were you in Singapore uh, the last? Ah, time? Uh, maybe uh, last night. Yeah, uh, one year and a half ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I've been there for. A, a, a digital transformation event, yeah. Okay. And, uh, industry four uh, uh, exhibition, yeah. Right. Okay. Very good. Very good. So, are you from uh, uh, the uh, Saigon area, or are you from the north? Uh, I'm from the north. I, I was okay. born in Ningbing, uh, just okay. uh, Ningbing province, just around Hanoi. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I did uh, my study in France uh, around 10 years. Mm-hmm. My master and my doctor, yeah. mm-hmm. my PhD. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <coughs> I'm a PhD in computer science. Right. I, I came back to Vietnam uh, in 2017. Okay, so um, your your French is better than your English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, you know your, maybe French is. Yeah, no, I say. I mean, your English is very strong, so your French must be even better. Yeah, yeah, because you know, in in France, everyone uh, want to do French in uh, study and yeah. and uh, everything because uh, they uh, they want to use their own languages. That's right. Up and you, you, uh, you like That's something. right. Yeah. Yeah. Morning. Is that uh, Sasaki son? Yes. Oh, okay. How nice yeah. to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. Hello, nice to see you. Uh, Sasaki. Sasaki. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what a different world. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are you in uh, Tokyo, Sasaki son? Yes, near Tokyo. It's a one-hour drive to Tokyo. It's a suburb. Okay. Towards uh, uh, Fujisan? Uh, no, the other way. Uh, north the other from. Way. No. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Near Tsukuba Mountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I used to come to Japan at least once or twice a year, and. Uh, oh, really? Okay. Last uh, <laughs> eighteen months, <laughs> haven't sat in a plane. Hi, Kitamuro right. san. Hello, can you hear me now? Very well. Yeah, yeah, very great, well. Great, 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 yeah. great. Good morning. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. I, I, I just had a quick look at your profile. You uh, were a journalist at some point. A uh, long time ago, uh, some 30, <laughs> 30 some years ago. Yes, yes. <laughs> Well, good for you. You you got your priorities right. Uh, I mean, I'm uh, still struggling for uh, Jan. <laughs> well, I I still get to write, and uh, <laughs> I, I still get to write. I'm, I'm I, I write articles in internet. I'm I'm, <clears throat> I'm writing a book as we speak. Uh, oh, on what? On private equity investing, actually, on private oh. equity investing. Yes, um, and um, and you know the 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 habit that I picked up as a journalist really sticks, has stuck with me. Okay. Uh, yeah, trying to, you know, expand the horizon, meet with people, you know, try to get information out of conversation. Um, I, I no longer have to worry what's newsworthy or not. That's that's the only difference. But, yeah. but you know, it's, it's a habit that I picked up as a journalist. No, I mean, I think it's great uh, because one thing it's taught me, uh, I've been a journalist for 42 years, and uh, it is that uh, you can engage people from a child to, uh, uh, you know, a 90-year-old person, you know, you can uh, have a good conversation. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, just yesterday, I was talking to uh, uh, this person called Fu, uh, Jisun Fu of uh, GTV Capital. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you know him. Uh, he was also an early investor uh, uh, in Baidu. Uh, uh, you you invested in Alibaba, right? No, uh, I think I think I know who you're talking about, Peter. Who he's um, he started another firm called ADTX, uh, and he I, I I recognize him because he claims himself as one of the early investors in Alibaba. And since you gave his profile like that, I, I think I know who, who you're talking about. That's not me. I wish I did invest in Alibaba. Oh, that's, <laughs> uh, that's not me. That's that's Mr. Peter Hu. I'm I'm a different person. Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> I wish I did, but um, okay, okay. There are not many people who can claim as an early investor of Alibaba, and he's one of them. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, I also once invested in Alibaba and had eleven uh, percent of the company in uh -huh. two thousand two, late two thousand two. Oh. I was on board of that for two years. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Oh yeah, uh, of course, yes. Mm. I, I uh, do you know a Singapore venture fund called Vertex? Yes, they're very Vertex. famous. Yes, Vertex. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Kilok, uh, Cho Kilok uh, runs it. Right. Yeah. They have uh, they have franchises <clears throat> around the world. Mm. A big franchise called Vertex, mm -hmm. and the Asian team is run by not only run by the Singapore team, but they're also owned by the by the Singapore team. So each of, they're under a huge franchise called Vortex, but each of the regional fund managers are owned by the partners. So it's a very interesting okay. uh, structure, actually. All right. Yeah. So Saki's son, uh, you, you focused a lot on Southeast Asia now, are you? Uh, I've been in Southeast Asia almost 30, more than 30 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, yeah, I saw some number. Uh, I mean, are you are you are you impressed with what you're seeing here? Are we doing uh, original stuff or are we doing copycat stuff? No what? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, can you hear me, Sasaki-san? Yes, yes. Okay. No, my question to you is, uh, uh, what do you see in Southeast Asia? Are we doing original innovative work, or is it just copycat stuff that... Uh... Mm, yeah. Um, I mean, Southeast Asia, until recently, has been a, a sort of a manufacturing yeah. transplant uh, target areas. Mm -hmm. and we been working for that for many years, um, but recently, uh, because of the, the, I mean, the advancement of the communication and the IT, there is some innovative people in IT sector, for example. Okay. Uh, re, I mean, re-evaluating this area as a, a origination place for the startups in this area. Okay. Yeah, I was talking to, uh, yeah, as I said, I was talking to uh, Jishun, and uh, they're saying that Xpeng is now talking about a flying car and all that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing what you see in China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I see a lot of fine people on uh, the panel. I'll just give them a couple of minutes more. Uh, so a few more can join us. Uh, uh, I see Richard Rosso there uh, uh, from McClarty, uh, you know, uh, and uh, Shibu and uh, uh, a few others. So just give them a couple of minutes and we will start again. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, Kitamura-san, would you like to uh, unmute yourself? Sure. Yeah. Thank Happy you. To. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, it's, I think it's uh, two minutes past uh, 
our uh, appointed hour. And I think I'll just uh, start off uh, by uh, thanking uh, Horasis and the Confederation of uh, Indian Industry for organizing this uh, very important subject. And from a Southeast Asian perspective, uh, it, it truly is important uh, on the Indian engagement uh, in RCEP and whether it can uh, 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 strengthen RCEP. Uh, you know, just to give a bit of background to those uh, who are listening in and will probably watch the tapes later. Uh, last November, the uh, 15 nations uh, uh, grouped under RCEP, that's ASEAN plus uh, five dialogue partners, uh, they uh, agreed and signed RCEP, uh, you know, and it took uh, eight years of negotiations, uh, uh, 15 ministerial meetings, uh, 31 uh, negotiating rounds. And finally, they got a document of 14,000 pages, uh, which in effect means that this region can now uh, play from a single uh, rule book. Uh, it is the largest FTA in the world, uh, with, uh, grouping about uh, a third of global GDP. But the one gap, big gap uh, in RCEP uh, is India. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, many people may remember the surprise that uh, uh, East Asia got in November of 2019 when uh, Mr. Modi, uh, the Prime Minister Modi, announced at the ASEAN summit in Bangkok. Uh, that uh, India was pulling out of RCEP, uh, withdrawing from RCEP. Um, uh, and uh, later it was explained that uh, this is because of uh, geopolitical reasons, uh, the need to protect its farmers. Um, and and uh, so it's a great pity that uh, Asia's third biggest economy is not in the RCEP uh, deal. Um, so that is the RCEP story. Uh, but uh, the on the plus side, uh, aside from China uh, uh, and uh, maybe a couple of others, India does have FTA accords with uh, most of the uh, other RCEP nations. So it's difficult to say uh, if it will benefit uh, more by joining the uh, larger group. Uh, but of course, you know, everyone knows that uh, Asian political solidarity would be enhanced and, uh, uh, you know, especially in these fraught times uh, when... Uh, uh, you know, the geopolitical currents are so uh, worrying uh, that to have India in the uh, discussions would have been very good, uh, especially as we look to the future when RCEP might well have a permanent secretariat. Uh, so to not have India there is, I think, a big loss. Uh, as a Singaporean uh, based in Singapore, uh, we are very saddened by the absence of India in RCEP. So that's the uh, uh, broad picture. Uh, we have an excellent panel that uh, Frank has put together to uh, discuss this. And uh, I will uh, go by the order in which I uh, uh, was given. Uh, I'll starting with uh, Mr. Motoyo Kitamura, uh, founder and CEO of North Village Investments in Japanese and Private Equity. Uh, he's made several visits to India uh, and uh, shares with me uh, uh, you know, a bit of a journalist background. Uh, and after that, uh, Mr. Pham uh, Tuanan, uh, he's the CIO of uh, Bikamex uh, Smart City Office in Vietnam. Uh, I had the uh, pleasure and the privilege of uh, being at two harasses conferences in uh, in the Smart City, in the wonderful conference set center in uh, uh, Binh Duong province. And um, Mr. Pham has had a very busy week uh, because uh, of uh, he's setting up uh, two uh, field hospitals for COVID patients in his province. Uh, I was in a conference call earlier uh, last week with uh, the World Bank President, David Malpas, and he sounded very concerned about the Delta variant uh, in Vietnam in the commercial zones. So uh, so I'm very uh, thankful for your presence here, Ms. Pham. Uh, Yoshiki Sasaki is Chief uh, Executive Officer of Japan's Strategic Capital. Uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fund that invests in startups, and uh, with long experience in Southeast Asia. So, uh, you know, it, it would be uh, very privileged to hear your remarks, uh, Sasaki-san. Unfortunately, the fourth person on the panel cannot be uh, on today. That's Mr. Sukhbir Singh from India. He's the president of the India Metro Association. He's come down with COVID and uh, doctors have advised him to uh, 
uh, to stay silent and not strain his lungs. So I will start off uh, then, and you know, I just hand the floor to you, uh, gentlemen. Uh, maybe make some uh, uh, opening remarks of uh, five to eight minutes on your thoughts on this uh, very important subject. And um, uh, I will uh, start with you, uh, uh, as I said, uh, Kitamurasan. <clears throat> the floor is yeah. yours. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for your introduction as well. I've um, I've um, invested in private equity for the last couple of decades, including uh, India, uh, and um, and that's basically one of the reasons why I'm here. One of the big reasons why I'm here. Um, but um, you know, private equity is is investing in private companies, and and not and the companies that we invest in not necessarily need to have international bandwidth uh, or uh, become uh, the part of a pre-trade agreement or a zone in order to succeed uh, in, in a very um, in, a, in a very narrow sense. Um, and then as in private equity, we, we try to uh, get investment returns in two, three years or, or up to five years of um, time span. So it's a very short-term investment. Um, having said that, we do follow the topic of RCEP closely and, 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 and other free trade agreements closely. Needless to say, geo geopolitics, because if investing in Asia, you can't ignore geopolitics. Um, so I've been, this, this topic of RCEP has been uh, uh, an issue for, for us, not a deal killer or an accelerator, but uh, an issue for us. And I've been following very loosely this topic um, from Japan. Um, so I might have a, a different view or not an expert view, but um, having said that, I've, um, I have come up with you know, five topics uh, okay. that came up to my mind when I was um, placed in this, uh, this panel uh, discussing our, our step. One of, one of them is more of a question than, than, uh, than, than, than my um, opinion, but um, from from here, I understand that India has distanced itself from RCEP, and that's the end of the story. I would like to know if there is any reason to believe that decision could be turned around. Um, has any possibility of being, that being turned around, uh, or has been, or, or whether there have been any discussion internally or domestically uh, that the decision was, you know, questionable, and they that they, they should you know, get back to the table again, I'll, I'll be very much interested to know because I'm personally not aware of anything like that from, from here. Mm -hmm. um, that's my first point. Second point is it's a, it's, a, it's a broad observation, but each country, you know, generally weighs its pros and cons in participating in a regional economic arrangement. And pros are usually on macroeconomic basis and cons are usually about geopolitics and also about protecting certain industries that would suffer from the international framework. And I think you mentioned uh, a little bit briefly about farming. But I'd like to know if this dynamics is the case for RCEP. And if so, what those specific industries are and how important they are in the Indian economy as well as Indian politics. That's second point. Third point, I'd like to know if there's uh, any of the other international framework that India is involved in is regarded as a better substitute for RCEP, especially Quad. And I bring Quad up because it's a big topic in Japan, because Japan is a participant in Quad. It's highly political, uh, but it's noticeable in Japan because, you know, despite the fact that not many countries in it, um, India is in it. Uh, and I think there's, uh, there's a conscious China factor there. Um, and there's an idea in Japan, at least, um, that Quad could be something, something that we can, you know, use as a weapon to confront um, China. I, well, I wouldn't say weapon, but something to confront China. Uh, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure how's that regarded in, in India, India, but if that's regarded as a substitute or something that's more interesting or it's something that would fit their international boat geopolitical needs, um, that would be very interesting to know. Um, 
Uh, number four, I'd like to understand better how India sees international framework like ours in general, given its domestic economic factors. Low, dom low domestic costs, large and growing middle class, working class, not being a huge export of the manufacturing goods, states having considerable independence uh, within the country. So, you know, this is a very general point, but I'm, uh, I'm not sure how conscious the, the India business sector is. Uh, well, uh, business sector may be, but you know, other parts of the decision making um, system is uh, in in terms of you know achieving RCEP participation. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if that's a big topic enough um, in India, as it seems to be from outside the country. Um, mm -hmm. My last point is very very broad. I mean, I'm, uh, um, but I won't be shy to bring this up. But ever since Brexit and Trumpism, make something great again concept has been openly embraced in many countries. Um, you know, that has been simmering, I think, in many countries, but ever since Brexit, I think there are people or groups in, in, in many countries that openly admit that national, nationalist interests should outweigh uh, the, the international um, framework, such as, such as RCEP. And I'd like to know if that, that psychology has anything to do with India's decision over RCEP. And if that's the case, is this trend being overturned after Trump is gone or is likely to stay for a while? And if this is not a factor, that's, that's fine. In Japan, it's less of a factor, I think. But in India, is it? I mean, it's, it's something that I'll be interested to know. Mm -hmm. So those are the five points that I, 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 I came up with as a homework. Cool. Uh, Kitabur san thank you for those opening remarks. They are very broad, uh, sweep, uh, sweeping, uh, 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 you know, points, and they are important. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we will have opportunity to discuss a few of that. We're really missing an Indian participant here uh, in this panel. And I'm hoping that uh, people in the audience may want to contribute uh, later when the floor is, uh, uh, you know, thrown open to them. And uh, they can keep their questions ready and maybe their comments uh, ready. Uh, you know, but please keep those comments brief. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Palm from uh, uh, Bicamex, uh, yeah. sir, the floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ravi, for your introduction. And uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to join this panel discussion. Uh, I'm from the BKMX. Uh, let me introduce about the BKMX. We are, we are the biggest industrial park developer in Vietnam. So we have attracted a lot of FDI investors uh, into in our industrial park. That's why we are really considered about the trade agreement, uh, like FTA or CCTPP, something like that. Because it's, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, two years ago, uh, we, uh, we have a plan with, to, to open now industrial park in India, mm. but up, after the withdrawal for uh, uh, India uh, from the RCEP, so we, we have to delay our, our plan because you know uh, it's very important to us to to to, to convince our FBI investor from around the world to to invest inside our industrial park. So that's why we have discussed with Dr. Frank, and that's the reason why I. I, I, I um, I become a, a speaker for, for this session today. So um, uh, after study about the, the, the trade agreement and RCEP, uh, I will bring up a growth file bullet point today, uh, and I want to, to discuss with uh, everyone in this session. Um, uh, and I, I want to give you another point, about because Bing Zhong, our province, is the biggest manufacturing hub in Vietnam. Yes. We have uh, around, around 30 industrial, industrial parks uh, right. yeah, in, in Vietnam. Uh, so uh, we are really, uh, because I'm the director of Bing Zhong uh, Smart City Office, so I know that the, yes. the, the withdrawal of uh, uh, India from the RCEP is uh, creating many consequences to, uh, to our, our, uh, our policy and our, our strategy for the next step. But uh, I think the, in uh, India government, they have their own uh, reason. Because uh, the, the first point, because uh, I think that uh, 
Indian government is concerned about the increasing the trade deficits with China. Yeah, I, I maybe I have some the same point with uh, Mr. Motoya. So because you know, uh, uh, because of uh, many difficulty uh, due to the trade war between the U.S. and China. So uh, China maybe uh, want to gain the deeper access to the large potential market like India. So I think uh, RCEP is uh, the, the one of the best way to help them to, to enter into India market. So I think the, the, the Indian government have their, 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 their reason to, to, to withdraw from the RCEP. So um, uh, I, I study about the two-way trade between China and India. The, uh, it's rich, uh, about 19, 95 billion US dollar in 2018. But uh, yes. the China trade ship flow with India was uh, 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 50, uh, 53 billion US dollar. So it's huge. It's huge. So that's why uh, the India government, they need to protect uh, their, their, their themselves and protect their domestic uh, economy and domestic uh, market. Uh, um, the, the second point I want to discuss with everyone in this session is about the, uh, the India um, government, they, they, are, uh, they was concerned about the impact of RCEP when opening the market, that have, uh, as I have just mentioned, because uh, uh, they are worried, they, they was worried about uh, East Green make uh, its market close with the good come from other countries as well as the African agriculture sector. Because uh, uh, you, uh, maybe, uh, and, and it will create many consequences to the people in the rural area. Because maybe, you know, the, the Indian agriculture is, uh, is largely uh, rudimentary and uh, with not many support from the model technology and limited packaging, processing, and storage operation. So they are, I think they have their reason to, to worry about that. That's why they, they, they decide to withdraw from the RCEP. The third point uh, I want to, to discuss with everyone that about the uh, India uh, withdrawal from the RCEP is likely to weaken the gap in the competition between the India and Chinese industry. Yeah. Uh, even for despite concern about the social economy impact on vulnerable sector, mm -hmm. but this uh, problem cannot be ignored. From that, uh, uh, from this point, uh, it's also clear that uh, India comprehensive reform pace is quite slow in terms of policy to seek, uh, to seek uh, external partner and join the global competition train. So that's, uh, I think, the, the point we, 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 uh, we, I see uh, from my, uh, my opinion. So the, the fourth point is uh, India withdrawal in receptor will predict that due to the pressure from the domestic and stakeholder because uh, they, they need to protect themselves first before joining a, a pre chase agreement. But uh, uh, this problem, however, uh, this move shows that India is increasing promoting the protection uh, of uh, domestic production. And they have a, a priority goal of solving the trade deficits with other countries first. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I, I study about the many experts predict that uh, in the near future. Right. Uh, India is unlikely to shine more F FTA and right. they and will soon review shy at FTA with ASEAN, right. Korea and Japan due to the, the growing of trade deficit. Because because it's very dangerous to India if they they sign the free trade agreement but uh, they, they don't have enough uh, uh, protection for, for their domestic uh, uh, market, for its uh, domestic economy. So uh, and the last point uh, we, 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 should, uh, we can discuss together that about the, the India uh, withdrawal from the region uh, and not only RCEP, but they, uh, they, they withdraw from the CPTPP too. 
So it's going to make the difficult for the country, for the India to, to achieve their ambition of becoming a manufacturing hub uh, uh, in Asia and, and around uh, in the world. And it's also post a great uh, challenge in maintaining the engagement of major power of promoting free trade and regional multilateralism. So, okay. uh, yeah, so uh, that's the five point. Uh, I, uh, I hope that we can continue to discuss in this yeah. session together. And, yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Firm. You brought in a very interesting point uh, that uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, investors are holding back uh, on investing in India already, although RCEP has not been ratified. You know, a majority of the states uh, and the partners need to ratify it uh, before it can become a real deal. But the fact is, just the fact that India has drawn ha is proving negative already. I mean, that's a very interesting point you brought up, and I'm grateful to you for that. Uh, I just want to clarify that I don't think India was in the CPTPP at all. But since you brought it up, Mr. Palm, I'm going to ask you, after uh, Sasaki-san has had his remarks, uh, I'm going to ask you two questions, and you might want to prepare for it. One is that, uh, uh, you know, Vietnam went ahead and signed not just RCEP, but also CPTPP, which is a much more ambitious uh, 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 agreement than, uh, uh, than, than, than RCEP. I would like you to tell us later uh, what gave uh, what gave Vietnam the confidence to sign such a bigger deal, and uh, uh, what, what, what lessons you have learned from it, and what do you suggest India do in the light of your own experience uh, with CPTPP and an ambitious uh, uh, trade agreement like that? But before you do that, uh, may I turn the floor to Sasaki San, please? Okay. I, I mainly have two points, and the in, the countries like Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, Philippines, all these people are now feeling uh, hmm. the uh, two pressures from China and the U.S. And both countries are asking whether are you going to be our side. <laughs> so <laughs> then. Uh, but uh, the those countries ask for this question: If we aggregate all those deeds, is uh, not a small and you know, uh, For example, whole uh, economy is, uh, say, half of the China, half of China, for example, and then India is also the next uh, big area. So what I see is that uh, a country like us need to have uh, some other options, uh, like uh, not just China or just US. And the, so that is uh, from more of a, a political area. Right. But uh, in doing so, uh, the we need to have sort of a connection in the, in the daily life, which RCEP will bring us the inform of the business, and that creates the relationship of the people. So that is, in that sense, necessary. And uh, the second one is the point for for India, what it means. I've been investing in uh, in Southeast Asia and China for those 30 years, the first 10 years in investing in ASEAN countries. And at the time of Asian crisis, we had uh, 500 million U.S. invested, mostly right. to manufacturing uh, related to Japanese industry. And that was almost 160 companies in Southeast Asia mm -hmm. that then bring the international competitiveness for these countries. For mm -hmm. example, in Thailand, more than 5,000 Japanese companies operate which is then creating export from that country. And then from late 1990, uh, we started investing in China. Hmm. That was the first fund to come into China. Hmm. And the, that was uh, possible because there was no investment in China. And we brought in the technologies and also investing in companies like Alibaba, for example, <laughs> to create their work. 
And the, then soon after that, the Chinese economy become uh, more self-sustainable. Right. <laughs> and the foreign, and the, they started uh, right. to do their own uh, after that. And, but initially, all the technologies and market are brought from outside. Right. And the, I think uh, the similar thing could be done for India. Right. India is not studied study right. yet right. in that sense. Right. We have already uh, invested a uh, balance of the foreign direct investment for Southeast Asia from Japan, right. Right. 250 billion US. Right. And that is creating industry there. Right. But when we look at India, it's just one tenth of that. <laughs> uh, it's two times the population. Right. So that's, uh, that's what we <clears throat> need to be improved. Mm. Of course, they can think of pro protecting their agriculture, but mm. this is this equilibrium at a very low level. Mm -hmm. If uh, India is going to right. increase their per capita income, say above 4,000, 5,000 US, then right. surely they need to in, I mean, introduce technologies and market from outside. Mm -hmm. and initially, and to pay for mm -hmm. that, they need to attract investment from outside. So that's right. what the politicians uh, need to think about that. Right. Right. Of course, the agriculture is always, uh, I mean, protective side and uh, politically delicate. For example, right. we have. Even we have, uh, I mean, the rice issue. Of yes, you do. A small <laughs> amount of rice and for the less than 2% of population uh, farmers, for example, right. for us. But right. it is still a big agenda. Right. But uh, after, say, 20 years of, uh, say, pressures uh, to right. the market, our right. uh, uh, farming is starting to increase competitiveness. Therefore, we need outside pressure to improve right. the industry. Right. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Are, are you done or do you want another minute? Are you, are you, are you finished? Yes, yes, I finished. Yes. Wonderful. Right. Uh, so, okay, friends. Uh, uh, you, you are the last person to speak. Uh, may I ask you the first uh, question? Uh, and it comes out of what you just said, and I hope the government of India is listening very carefully to your remarks. Um, you know, one of the reasons that India feels it can be out of these trade deals like RCEP is that many people in India, very powerful people, think that the market size is so big that uh, investors cannot ignore it. And that, uh, uh, you know, is this a perception that they need uh, to correct? Uh, especially uh, because, as you say, you know, I mean, there's so many alternative uh, investment destinations. And you yourself, uh, you invested in Southeast Asia at the height of the Asian financial crisis. Then you went to uh, China. And since you started investing in Southeast Asia, you've seen ASEAN coming together as a credible uh, investment body. Um, uh, you know, so... Would you like to uh, 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 say a bit more about this? Say that, look, uh, uh, you know, just because you have a big market, it doesn't mean that investments will flow. Would you, would you like to comment on that, uh, Sasaki san Yes, of course. Uh, without our SAP, we really do not uh, ignore India. But it's a question of speed. Right. Uh, we, in this uh, age, he, everybody has the same information at the same time. Therefore, we can invest in Latin America, we can invest in <clears throat> Africa, for example. <clears throat> Africa <throat> is going to be the uh, most popular continent, for right. example, of this a long term. Uh, therefore, that's uh, probably a question of speed, uh, how they... He, I mean, India want to uh, catch up with other countries. But, uh, you know, I mean, would you agree that market size alone doesn't mean that investments will flow to your country? Uh, of course, uh, there's a lot of barriers in doing invest, I mean, investment or the, e, e, or the trade. Uh, and 
I personally invested, I mean, from, uh, from my former company, we invested in India in 1995, six, mm. Uh, mm. Two, three companies. And uh, we talked about the investment procedures mm -hmm. and then uh, only that uh, items count uh, two pages of <laughs> processes with uh, <laughs> <laughs> approvals. Right. For example. Uh, and the say therefore that uh, could protect but that means uh, there is uh, the speed of innovation coming is slowing down in the sense right okay and the, uh, therefore uh, if there is a protection of course that's a protection for everybody therefore mm. from a competitive point of view if you look at a specific company uh, that works uh, equally to everybody but mm. uh, uh, the speed of, uh, I mean, in the developing the market or association, uh, we're slowing down anyway. Right. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, uh, as you're aware that uh, Prime Minister Modi has made some efforts in the last uh, uh, year to speed up that process. And uh, uh, all of us would like to see India succeed, and uh, especially in uh, Singapore, uh, we desperately want to see India do well. Uh, Mr. Farm, I, can I bring, uh, go back to that question that I flagged yeah. earlier uh, about uh, uh, Vietnam? Uh, uh, you know, you, you're not only in RCEP, but also in the much more ambitious CPTPP. Uh, what gave you the confidence as a small economy or medium-sized economy to go and join something as big as CPTPP? What have been the lessons you learned from it? And what advice would you give India on the basis of those lessons? Yeah, uh, thank you for your interesting question, uh, Ravi. Okay. So right. uh, I, even as I'm not an expert, but I will give you my opinion and uh, some right. information that we <laughs> have learned, have a very big lesson learned from the history. Because mm. uh, up, after the Vietnam War, we are mm. close. We, we mm. have we close our, our, our market. So mm. it, it's made very consequent. And mm. uh, and uh, maybe 20 years ago, we decided to open our market. So mm. the Vietnamese uh, economy has increasing very fast. So right. uh, closing is not a good choice in, in, in general, especially now uh, the world has, uh, is becoming flat and right. we should try tries our best to integrate to, with every, uh, every country around the world. It's mm. better than than closing than, than closing uh, our market. That, mm. That's a, 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 an ex, uh, experience from the, the history. But uh, uh, about the economy, uh, uh, we uh, we we have studied uh, careful about the uh, many FTA, and we we, we the, the reason why we uh, uh, we are confident to join uh, any FTA because we have a. Um, uh, uh, ec economically, the, the market of country uh, participating in the, for example, uh, CTPPP is large, with a total GDP around 13.5% uh, of global G GDP. So, uh, including the Japan uh, as the third largest uh, economy in the world. So, uh, therefore, uh, joining the CTPPP is a uh, general beneficial for Vietnam. And uh, and uh, and uh, I have studied about the, 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 the some research, and uh, our government, uh, the Ministry of Planning and Investment, have studied have a comparison, mm -hmm. and the, the CTPPP can have the Vietnam GDP uh, and export increasing increase by one point three percent and four point four percent respectively. And mm -hmm. until the 2035, so totally, uh, total import turnover may be, uh, may also increase by uh, third for third point eight percent. Uh, it's lower than uh, than the growth rate of export. So, right. uh, so the overall impact on the trade balance is favorable. So, okay. And 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 about about the uh, our sector. So, you know now COVID uh, this stops the global supply chain. So right. I think RCEP uh, is a very good chain uh, to 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 to, and we will have the member to, to 
to mark an important milestone in in the economic integration uh, right. of, of the, uh, the member. So right. I think, uh, and you know, uh, our set with the participant of uh, uh, 15 uh, members. So it will create right. a market of you know, 2.2 billion people and equivalent sure. to to 26 trillion US dollar. So it's great. Is when create the largest free trade area in the world. Right. So, uh, so that's why uh, after having yes. very careful analyze of uh, uh, Vietnam sure. and even from the lesson learned from uh, the history, uh, uh, we are we are we are think that we should open. We we, right. we should open our our market instead right. of close continue to close our market yeah. because we we lose our opportunity. So, uh, Thank you. Thanks, yeah. thanks for those uh, wise words. Uh, uh, Kitamura-san, you're in private equity. And uh, as you know, uh, in the last uh, one and a half years, uh, the uh, uh, the geopolitical situation and the bilateral relations between India and China have been severely impacted. And uh, a lot of companies that uh, Chinese investments that were putting money into Indian startups are now pausing, uh, hesitating because they don't know where to go. Now, as a private equity investor, uh, has that opened the window for you and other investors from so-called friendly countries? Are you getting better valuations uh, or rather cheaper valuations in India now that, uh, you know, all that big India, uh, Chinese money floating around uh, has been stopped uh, in a way from uh, entering uh, uh, India, especially in technology startups? Um, Kitamura san um, you know, I think the, the fact, international factors that you mentioned could affect bigger companies, okay. companies in India, yes, right. and uh, especially for um, companies that um, are, have business or relationships uh, with China or are invested by Chinese companies, mm -hmm. it could definitely have effect. But uh, when it comes to private equity investment in India, most of the investments tend to be small uh, very mm -hmm. small uh, okay. and um, yes um, are not sizable enough to embrace international trends uh, sort of right partly because India India market is big enough right um, so it's I would say it's less of a factor if it becomes okay. a big investment yes right. I'm more, more cautious <laughs> um, you know I, I mean just to share my my experience in investing in private equity in India and and I'm, I'm sure it is the case for other investors is, you know, first of all, we are marbled mm -hmm. by the by the magnitude of mm -hmm. everything. Like mm -hmm. you said, there's, there's, you know, the, where you, you hear about portfolio companies, client base, for example, and they come up with numbers like 100 million. Mm -hmm. and, and that's as, as almost as big as the population of Japan. Right. Uh, and so, so you, you feel like that you, you have a lot of opportunity there. But then not not many of us has have made a lot of money in india some of us have made less money in the india uh, than japan and japan is much of a, a low growth economy than india needless to say smaller okay. population which means that there are many more factors right uh, in, a, in an economy that will be actually lead to fruition in terms of investment returns and one is yes one is magnitude but you know that only means that there are many opportunities. Uh, it, could uh -huh. also, it could also mean uh, that there are many competitors out there. So okay. you, you often hear many companies and many investment firms in India talking very similarly about similar business. And they'll right. come up with all come up with big numbers. Right. 50, 50 million customer base. Um, but, but the stories are very similar. So you, you're in, you, you have, from the investment point of, point of view, uh, you're investing potentially in a uh, in a red ocean, uh, as opposed to blue ocean. So that's okay. that's number one. Number two is, um, uh, you know, um, um, it's it's also about structuring of the deals. Um, the deals, um, you know, the, the the basic factors might be there, but what about how the deal is structured? How do you get into the, the deal? How do you exit from the deal? How do they exit from the companies? When right. do they exit? How do they, do they, um, are, um, are, is there easiness to exit? Exit. 
for the deals. Okay. Um, okay. Those those small parts, I think, often in my case, uh, lack right. of um, <clears throat> components when it comes to um, measuring success in Indian okay. private equity. So, okay. so not, it's it's not only about magnitude. It's not only about um, you know free trade agreement. It's about you know very narrow <laughs> niche stuff that we need to see, um, and and that those are the specifics that will translate into investment returns. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, just yesterday, I think an Indian company, Zomato, went to IPO and they made a ton of money uh, uh, on uh, when they listed their stocks. And I think you know, your uh, response just now, Kid Morrison, uh, uh, should probably serve a question that was asked to me by Mr. Narayanan, uh, who's uh, listening in. He asked a question about uh, Japanese funds, and I hope uh, Mr. Narayanan got... Uh, some indication of your of Japanese thinking from your response. When you said red ocean, I suppose you mean India, right? Yes, and you know, and when it comes yeah. to India, one thing I <laughs> I I always struggle to understand is which region uh, yes. are the companies and funds talking about? Because okay, because it's a big company. They have right. and no, no, sorry, sorry, big country. And each region have huge population and very different culture. Yeah. Uh, you can't just say, oh, India is well, big, India is this, this, India is that. The region, each region has <laughs> their own culture, their own history, different kind of people, yeah. different politics. So that's, that's another barrier that you know, makes, uh, at least for me, very, very difficult to invest. I'm not saying it's impossible. But yeah. it's, it's always a factor that we need to do. Well, you know, Kimurasan, I can give you this advice. You should team up with Singapore companies to go into India because Singapore has cracked India better than any other country in this region. So you might want to consider uh, going in with some Singapore partner, <laughs> you know, when you, when, when you go in there next. Uh, we, we're sort of running out of time. So I, can I just ask a last uh, uh, question uh, to uh, a couple of questions uh, which... All of you might uh, uh, have a quick uh, uh, comment to make. One is that um, in the Indian narrative, uh, you know, they say, why should we open up our markets to foreign manufactured goods when the countries that want us to open up our markets are not willing to allow Indian services industries the same access to their markets? As you know, services is very sensitive, including in Singapore and everywhere else. But do you think the Indians have a point when they say that, look, uh, uh, you know, we need to get something out of this deal and we are strong in services and you must allow us um, um, an amount of penetration into your markets that you expect, uh, for, uh, you know, from us for, uh, for your manufacturers. That's one. The second point uh, which you might want to address in your closing remarks is, uh, you know, Sasaki-san spoke about the importance of the third group and, uh, you know, not having India there sort of weakened it. Uh, do you think uh, since uh, relations with China don't seem to be, uh, uh, you know, in any way likely to improve soon, that um, uh, a free trade area with the coordinations and like-minded countries could be uh, another possibility to bring India closer? Uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, all of you might want to make uh, uh, a one-minute comment each, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, starting with you, uh, uh, Mr. Palm. Yeah, uh, for, for the second question, I think, uh, uh, in the near future, um, uh, it's difficult to, to I mean, to, to, balance between the, to, to balance the relationship between China and India. Right. But uh, the, the Indian government, they have uh, their reason. Yeah, I think the, the Reasonable reason for 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 delay to I think just delay not not uh, not forever to participate in our, our set. but uh, okay. but uh, they need uh, they need to continue to to make them stronger uh, and the bigger uh, I, I keep my opinion that uh, closing our market is not a good choice maybe it's good for for short term but in long term we need a work integrated work and we need to integrated market. Because uh, uh, yeah. FTA is a win-win uh, game. It's not no yes. one-side game. So yeah. that's why the Vietnam now we we are ready to 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 join to even it's then great because we we are not strong like India, but uh, we know that we need to open to to learn and we uh, step by step. But uh, right. you know, uh, yeah. 
Very good. Very good words. Thank you for those very wise words, uh, Sasaki-san. Yes, uh, I, I have the similar opinion. And the anyway, the if uh, I mean it's a bilateral, uh, therefore uh, multilateral, so to speak. Then uh, if uh, they open, they we open, and then that creates uh, more. Uh, I mean, competition immediately, but uh, that creates uh, increase of competitiveness. To stay with that, and then finally we get to a very competitive industry. Therefore, we need to compete anyway. And the then uh, the China and the I mean the political uh, stance and the, the the people's perception is a little bit different. Therefore, of course, at the ground level, you have to have a personal good relationship with. Many countries, but yes. uh, the politicians have their stance, their own, stance, <laughs> and they they have to change sometimes. But uh, the people yeah. don't don't change. Therefore, anyway, yeah. we have to build our own relationship with everybody. For example, yes, China, and the U.S. are both uh, big partners for us, and uh, we yes. do not want that these people yeah. will, will quarrel, quarrel together. For, for yeah. example. Right. Uh, yes. Therefore, we have to have that sort of a neutral opinion, and right. India is going to be a very big voice. They decide. Right. To do so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sasaki. And very wise words, because as you know your own government spends so much money on public diplomacy with China to bring Chinese tourists to your country, and they come back. Uh, they come back to China with a good feeling about Japan. Uh, and that's a very positive thing. And I think even the Vietnamese have gained from keeping very close economic ties with China, uh, while political problems are different. Uh, uh, Kitamura-san, would you like the last word? Well, I'll just limit myself to your first question by answering yes. They do have a point. Yes. And as an investor, I would rather try to avoid <laughs> that question and mm. try to invest in a domestic story. Hmm. Because the domestic market is enough, is is interesting and, and big enough for us. Uh, if it ever comes to uh, a relationship with China, it's it's going to be too complicated as an investor. Right. Okay. So, uh, gentlemen, thank you for a wonderful morning. I really enjoyed talking with you and gained so much wisdom. Uh, from listening to your wise words. Uh, we in the media, we read things, we talk to people, but you are the people on the ground uh, with the real money. And I think, um, you know, uh, one of the positive things uh, 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 that I take away from this session with you is that uh, uh, never say never. You know, I mean, I think uh, somebody brought up this issue. Can India come back to RCEP? I hope it does, because India is now talking with the European Union for a free trade deal. And uh, that means it's not completely closed off uh, uh, its mind on uh, FTAs. And uh, RCEP members have said, it's a pity India is not in, but we will keep the door open for them to come back at a later stage. Uh, and on that happy note, and I hope uh, India does consider doing that. Uh, you know, I'll just say thank you, everybody from Singapore. Um, uh, 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 thank you for the session. Really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you, Harasses, and thank you, CII. Uh, Thank goodbye. You. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.